lately I've been thinking, lately I've been thinking a lot about style as an artist, styles of other people, my style, generally just been thinking a lot about style. I also realized that on this YouTube channel, I don't believe there's a single video where I've actually shown my face and talked to you. This is not an appealing angle. So I thought maybe it would be a good time to do that. I mean, maybe there is, but I don't, I don't really think so, except for the channel trailer that I just did. Either way, I know that if I have, it's been very minimal and it's important to be able to connect with you so you know who I am and I know who you are. So hi, it's me, I'm here, and I wanted to say hello. It's sunny outside. But I also wanted to share with you kind of like a video blog, a vlog of where I'm thinking I'm wanting to go artistically as an artist, talk about style, because I think artists in general Think about that a lot. Even if they're established artists, if they're growing, they're going to be thinking about style. They're going to be thinking about what they're doing, why they're doing it, how it makes them feel. Generally, creativity is a complex thing. I mean, don't get me wrong. Some people completely create void of any emotion and just do it for pure joy. But I think the large majority of people do it for something greater inside themselves. So for me, I've been doing art for 20 years. Yes, <gasps> that makes me ancient, but that's okay. I have had a great journey. I've been doing professional work in galleries and museums. I've been a curator. Well, I'm still a curator. I'm curating, curating a show in Portugal right now. I have been a gallerist, I teach, I have done all these different types of things that have informed me as a creator. And I all of a sudden in the last year feel very disenchanted with my work. <sighs> Part of the reason is for the majority of my career, I was a digital artist because I was allergic to everything, like deathly, life-threatening, allergic, and I couldn't touch really anything. So I had been doing digital art since 04, 05. And now in the last couple years, I was able to get a diagnosis and get medication, which actually made me less allergic to things. It's not completely not allergic, unallergic, not allergic. Anyway, it made me be able to work in some non-offensive mediums, such as watercolor and gouache, inks, colored pencils. And for the last two and a half years, I have had to relearn to be an artist. <clears throat> Pro tip, don't eat lunch before you film. I've had to learn, relearn, to be an artist and learn how to use mediums that I really haven't got to use. So I've moved into being a technician. There's story in my work, but there's a lot of thought about technical aspects. And from 2004 up till three years ago, I had been doing the same thing for so long that of course I was improving my techniques but it wasn't so complex. It wasn't a bunch of wheels in my head going doo -doo 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 -doo. like I had a method, I had a way, I had just generally a technique that was me and I was always improving. But now it feels so new to me that within a year I felt like I was getting somewhere and then all of a sudden I didn't feel like I was getting somewhere and then I feel like I'm making progress and then I'm not. And I feel like as an artist, it's important to share this type of journey because finding a style, even people who have styles, even famous people who have a style often get sick of it and want to change it or want to shift it or want more from their work. You can't eat the same plate of mashed potatoes every day without feeling like a prisoner. It's not actually going to help you grow. 
Don't get me wrong, I know there's artists out there that absolutely love doing the same thing over and over and over again, and that's fine. But there are those of us who want to seek, we want to travel, we want to explore, we want to go against the things that we're doing and figure that out. So right now, I think my biggest issue is I feel technically pretty good. I'm always going to feel like I suck. I think that's just a natural way that we feel, which helps us continue to move into not sucking. <laughs> because if you are content with what you're doing, you probably won't improve. And I think not being content is helpful. So here are some examples of, of work that I do now in the last couple years. And now I moved also into this experimental space where I have these works where I'm just loose, I don't care, I'm just really enjoying the process, being weird, and that's called Mysterium World. Okay, so let's get on to where I'm at. Where I'm at is I feel like my colors are too bold. I want them to be calmer. I feel like the stories are not as strong, and I definitely feel like I want more realism in my work. I've been thinking a lot about other artists that I love from history. I've also been thinking a lot about my way older work. So you just saw some of the newer work. Here is some of my older work. It's very different. It has a different kind of feel. I grew up in the Midwest. I grew up around farms. I grew up around tornadoes. I grew up around nature and stories. And I love costumes and, and different types of materials and just everything to do with kind of historically the the feeling of nostalgia that I get. The two artists that I love very much are Norman Rockwell and Wyatt. Wyatt's Christina's World as well as other works by Wyatt himself evoke that feeling in me. And the same with Norman Rockwell, the storytelling, the curiosity, the facial expressions. I know a lot of people will say that Rockwell is oversaturated, but I've always had a fondness for his work. It's just really beautiful. And I like to look at art that has story. I want to evoke a different type of connection with myself and my audience. I feel like the colors need to tone down, the stories need to improve, and I want to bring in elements of my history. So over the weekend, or the last week or so, I have been exploring a whole new style. Now, for you, you might go like, it looks just like your work, and I'm sure it does. But I'm telling you, it's, it's different in some ways. So we're looking at more of a warm kind of palette, not so bright and bold in your face. And if you see my house, I like bold and bright. But with art, when I'm done with bold and bright, it doesn't feel where I wanna feel when I'm doing more figurative work. When I'm doing Mysterium World, that's a different story. That can be crazy and nuts. But when I'm dealing with this portraiture storytelling work, I just feel like it needs to it just needs to feel more soft to me. And then this is one where I was working on more of the face and portrait style, working a little bit more on having realism and the clothing. And then I embarked on this one. With this one, I think I'm going to put a wallpaper on the back. Who does not like flocked wallpaper? If you don't, you're weird. Flocked wallpaper is amazing. And then this is one of the last pieces. And I think this is one of my favorites. And the reason why I'm really gravitating towards this piece is the darker mood, the murmurations, the birds, if you don't know what a murmuration is, please go Google it. It's one of the most beautiful things you will ever see. And I used to chase them as a photographer. But these beautiful murmurations that I love, the face has a lot more expression, a lot more emotion around it. So here's a good example. We already looked at this. Look at her facial expression. And now look at her facial expression. There's a lot more wonder. There's a lot more 
in her eyes. There's a lot more in, in the gaze and the way that the neck is moving and the movement in the piece with the murmurations in the back. This is the last piece that I was working on last night. It's for an upcoming show I'm curating in Portugal at the Curio Gallery called Indomitable Spirit. And the idea is like we as human beings have a spirit that can't be dominated in the sense that we have to get back up when we've been knocked down, that all of us have gone through trials and tribulations and our spirit inside of us the energy inside of our body is what keeps us going. So this is not done, but this is another piece that I'm working on. Again, there's a lot more going on with the story. There's a lot more going on with the facial expression. So this is the direction that I'm looking at moving in. And I feel like I still haven't even remotely touched where I'm wanting to go. So I'm curious, as an artist yourself, do you have a style? Do you, if you do, are you challenged by that? Do you get bored with it? If you don't have a style, what kind of style would you like? Give me one, two, three, I don't know, like anywhere between two to five artists that you wish you could meld their styles together to create your own style. That is one of the great ways, if you do not know your style yet, one of the best ways to find your style is to pick numerous artists that you like, find the pieces and parts of each one you like, and then Frankenstein it. Thank you so much for joining me on this journey, this little tiny video blog vlog. If you enjoyed it, consider liking and subscribing and letting me know down below. Do you want me to talk a little bit more about art, journeys? Do you want me to share more about my studio, my life as an artist? If you're interested, let me know. All right, I'll see you guys in another video really soon.